Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a public service warning. Now, recently, I did a discussion of the Klemper edition Sacred Music Box, which includes one of the iconic recordings ever of Beethoven's Mrs. Solemnis. And some of you chimed in saying, oh, but there are better ones, including, well, the Vox one that some people talked about, which we'll discuss anon, don't worry, but also this one which I happen to have sitting around, and I threw it in my little suitcase when I came back from Connecticut, so I could talk about it now. Um, it's, it's, it's with the Cologne Radio Symphony Orchestra and the Chorus of North German Radio and the Cologne Radio Choir from 1955. It's a radio broadcast in perfectly dismal mono sound, um, and some people said, oh, it's better, it's this, it's not better. I'm telling you, it's not better. I want to I want to tell you a story. You folks who are not hardcore, and some of you who are too. But a thing about these live historical broadcast recording things, some of them are admittedly marvelous. You have to take each one as it comes. I understand, but there is a tendency, a tendency in the classical universe, to be prejudiced against studio recordings. Everybody thinks that some guy must have done something live somewhere, somehow, which must have been better. Because part of the reason is that it's, there's a prejudice against major record labels. The classical music world is trained to hate them. I don't hate them. I get angry with them when they're stupid, which they are most of the time, but they own the material. I love them because they have the recordings. My anger is that they don't keep them available or try to sell them or have any clue about the value of what they have. But a lot of people seem to feel that it's much better to dislike things that were made for base commercial purposes as if art should be above all of that, which of course it isn't. The fact is that the art world, the art business, classical music people, musicians, they are the cheapest, most miserly, money-grubbing, immoral <laughs> group of people you'll ever encounter. And they do everything for money. It's all about money. It's always about money. And so is this, obviously. Klemper was hired. He did a job. He made a radio recording. And now they're trying to sell it. And so uh, the idea is that, that if you listen to this thing, besides the dreadful sound and the soloists who aren't as good, remember, that studio Mrs. Solemnus, who do you have singing? You've got Söderström, um, Marga Höfgen, uh, Waldemar Kment, and Marty Talvola. I mean, wow. Here you have, you have Annalise Cooper, um, Sieglinde Wagner, who was just a compromaria, Contralto, Mezzo, Rudolf Schuch, and Josef Grindel, who's perfectly fine. But, you know, they're not as good. The choruses are not as good as the Philharmonia chorus. The orchestra is not as good as the Philharmonia orchestra. And, and the conducting, well, it does have some moments that go a little faster, like at the end of the Gloria. You know, that's something that people listen to it and says, well, it has the spontaneity of a live recording with all the mistakes and all the slipshod ensemble and all the things that don't quite come off. And what's more, the like I said, the sonics are mono and really dim, really dim. The chorus sounds like sometimes way in the back. Sometimes they're like big and loud and blowsy. The rhythms are kind of slovenly. They, they're not articulated as cleanly as he was able to do it in the studio, even if it had to be a little slower. For better playing, better singing, better balances, better accentuation, clearer delivery of the text, here you get, okay, it's a little bit more exciting in a couple of spots. More exciting meaning faster. Faster doesn't always equate to more exciting, by the way. It's an A and B comparison thing. I think that there are moments at in the studio, Mrs. Lemus, that are unbelievably thrilling for their very deliberation because he doesn't go nuts. We have Sal to go nuts on those with those moments. And he does, and they're amazing. And it's live, and it's a billion times better than this. So so my point is really very simple. Don't believe everything you hear. Do not become one of those crazy people 
who is running around trying to find the holy grail, the unbelievable performance by this guy out of all the live performances he ever did. Because what has become clear in the classical music industry over the past few decades, as the especially the German radio archives, the BBC archives, all of these state-run institutions have been told that they, they have to make money. So they are... They don't care. They had recordings with famous artists and they're releasing them willy-nilly without the artist's sanction. And that's something else we have to consider too. I mean, as listeners, sometimes we don't care. We don't care what the artist said. We don't care what the artist thought. They're dead. They have no say. They don't own the copyright, you know, all that. But when you hear something like this, an inferior sound with plenty of rhythmic baubles and, and mediocre singing, and you ask yourself, if he were alive, would he have wanted this released to represent him? Would he have wanted it competing with the recording that had his imprimatur, his sanction? And I think the answer, as often as not, is no. I mean, we never really know the answer, of course, but it was the same thing with Fort Fangler. I'm absolutely sure that 90% of what got released or has been released by Fort Fangler, he never would have permitted to be released, and he would have been horrified if he knew that it had been released because it didn't represent him at his best. And artists deserve, serious artists, the ones we admire, deserve to be represented by their best work. You know, it's not just a question of collecting stuff. So you could say you have 27 Klemper or Mrs. Solemni. I mean, I'm not, you know, if that's what you like, if that's what you do, more power to you. But I'm talking about, as a critic, my responsibility is to speak, I think, on behalf of the artist, to let people know what really was sanctioned and what represent his best represents his or her best work, and to be honest about about the value of these things, which is minimal, and they charge a lot of money as often as not for this stuff. I mean, if you want a mediocre live Mrs. Solemnis and bad sound, here you go. If you want Klemperer's best Mrs. Solemnis, the one that really represents what he wanted to do, then you go for the Warner slash EMI Philharmonia Mrs. Solemnis. And I will come back to talk about his earlier, earlier Mrs. Solemnis as well. But that's a future video. For now, that's just what I have to say about this stuff. It's a cautionary tale. It really is. And don't believe the people who tell you that you have to have multiple versions and that bad sound doesn't matter and bad playing doesn't matter and so-so singing doesn't matter and none of it. It does matter. Of course it matters. It all matters. It matters when you're trying to find the best. And I think we should always be trying to find the best. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.